Hello everyone and welcome back to the Web Dev Coach, where my goal is to teach you web development. This is the second video in a series of videos where I dive into uh, the FreeCodeCamp curriculum and specifically their random quote machine front end project. I'll be using React for this project as recommended by FreeCodeCamp. Uh, let's dive right in. In the previous video, if you haven't checked it out, please do. But any anyway. In the previous video, we um, went over a few things. We checked to make sure that we had both uh, all three npm, node, and git installed on our local machines. Uh, the commands are written here, npm hyphen v, node hyphen v, and git hyphen hyphen version for npm, node, and git respectively. Second, we started a git project. Uh, I'm sorry, we started a React project on our local machines using create react app. Uh, thirdly, we integrated the FreeCodeCamp testing environment into our React project. And lastly, we got familiar with FreeCodeCamp's um, testing environment and actually passed the first test. So if you haven't watched the first video, please go back if uh, you need a refresher on those four topics or just go back just to start fresh. Now. I know what everybody wants to do is just start coding immediately. Get their fingers to the keyboard and start crunching some code. However, I would argue that's the incorrect way to start a project. The best way to start a project is to stay, take a step back and view the project basically as a whole uh, and write some notes about the best way to maybe approach the project. Uh, the, the, way to look at a project is um, breaking down the project step by step. What are the steps needed to take uh, to make the project flow easier? I can't tell you how many times I've skipped this step, um, coded a few things, found myself in the middle of the project, and found it very hard to think, what's the next step? Where do I go from here? And it's a bit easier to see the project as a whole, um, see the big picture, if you do this prior to starting. Give yourself five to 10 minutes to think about the project. I promise um, it'll go a long way. To get started with planning our uh, project, it's best to look at the spec and what the client wants. In terms of client for this specific project, for the random quote machine, our client will be free code camp. They gave us um, 10, I'm sorry, 11 user stories um, to go through to understand uh, what exactly our project should be. If you haven't already, please go to Free Code Camp and check out the specs. They were also nice enough to give us a, a demo application that we can play with and um, we can understand how it would work in action. So let's go to the demo application. You'll see in the middle. Um, there is a quote and underneath there is an author. The first thing I think of when I see that is some type of data structure to A, represent the quote, and a quote is not only the quotation here, um, it's an object that also contains the author, and there will be many, many quotes, so I'm trying to think of a data structure that can hold many, many things. If you think about it, the first thing that comes to mind would be an array, an array of quotes. And that quote would hold the actual quote and the associated author. So um, in terms of data structure, I'm thinking an array of objects. Those objects will be divide, uh, have two properties, one with the quote and one with an author. This is just an initial thought. I do not have to be 100% correct all the way through. I can adapt if I find something um, while I code should be different. Um, secondly, I look at the project and I wonder, React-wise, what are the presentational and the container components? In React, there are two types of components. One is container and the other is presentational. The container components usually hold um, the state. They usually hold all the data and they pass down that data into the presentational component. 
Um, this is something that may be easier to learn by example, but it's something to think about. So I imagine this specific project will have an app component which will hold the entire state, the, let's say, current quote displayed, and that current quote will have the current author. I'll pass that down to a component, and that'll be it. But it's something to keep in mind, how I want to divide the project into components. Speaking of components, I see uh, three other components down here. Um, one presentational component will be a um, generic button component. A button component where I can pass props into as new quote. And same thing here, I can pass a prop that um, says the Twitter icon and a prop that has the Tumblr icon. And um, lastly, I want to show that the Twitter I, uh, button here works. Um, you're allowed, you can post the quote to Twitter using your Twitter account, and I imagine the Tumblr uh, button works very similarly. So this is what we'll be building. Um, we have our quotes data structure down. We have an idea of how we want to divide the uh, components and um, let's get started with the code. Our application was left looking like this. I um, modified it to put this is Sparta right in the middle, um, just to show that uh, the React, the Create React app does hot reloading as soon as we edit it. Um, now, in terms of the random quote machine, I think a great place to start is the actual button that is pressed um, by the user. When I go through a project, the first thing I like to do is implement its functionality. Then when the functionality is all fleshed out, that's when I'll start um, actually styling the components um, little by little. So bear with me as the um, application goes through the life cycle of let's say an ugly duckling to a beautiful swan, but this ugly duckling will be functional. Let's get to the code. Um, now the Create React app, app.js, um, is some boilerplate that they give to us that actually renders the web application that you saw before. Um, basically what we need to do is just delete everything um, between the outer divs. And you'll notice here I have the ID of quote box that I added uh, last video. As we see logos being unused, let's delete that and delete the actual um, file called logo. And you'll see in the terminal below that it ke keeps getting rebuilt. Let's add a button here in the middle um, actually, to be fair, we decided that we'll be using a button component, creating and using a button component that we build personally so we can control the button CSS more easily and uh, learn how to pass props. So in the source folder, let's create a folder called components. Inside that folder, let's create a file called button.js. Um, this button.js will be a React component, so import React from React, um, and it will be a presentational component, which means it'll take in uh, some props, render out those props. It will not have a state. Since this button won't have a state by itself, um, It'll just, again, take in props of what to render and the on-click handler. Let's make it a stateless functional component, a React stateless functional component. So to do that, we say const of button is a function. Um, and to be honest, we can use parentheses here because the arrow function will return exact, uh, the next argument. So here we use a parentheses to return a button that says that takes in this function here. We'll take in the button display name. And this button 
will render out button display name. Now at the bottom, do not forget to export the button we just created, just like that. And that's how easy it is to create a um, presentational component in React. With presentational components, you want to try your best to make them um, a stateless functional component. React promised a performance improvements in the future if you know if they're functional components. So let's go back to app.js and actually import the button that we just created. So let's import button from components uh, forward slash button just like that. I forgot the word from. And here we have our uh, button. It's underlined in green VS Code to tell us that uh, we haven't used that button yet. So let's get to using it. Um, we'll render out a button here in the inner div, just like that. I believe this button took a prop called button display name. And we'll have that button display name be um, next quote. So uh, here we're passing props to our button component. I just wanted to point that out. This is not the HTML button element. This is the button component that we created here in the components folder that uses the HTML button element. So let's go back to our uh, web application and you'll see that there is a button on the top that reads next quote. Great job everybody. You created your first component in a real React application. Let's continue on by passing, um, this, this button has no functionality at the moment, right? So the best way is to continue on is to pass a click handler to that button. So let's go to our button component and should it also take in a click handler. And the click handler will be a function that is called when the HTML element button is clicked. So here in the HTML element, we're going to write on click and this equals um, the click handler. So whenever the button is clicked, call the click handler. What is the click handler? This button here doesn't know just yet, but it knows that it'll be passed in by the um, parent component. So it's basically the parent component that decides what the button does when it's clicked. The button itself doesn't really decide. The button just knows that a click handler will be passed in to props and to call it when the button is clicked. So let's go back to the parent. In this case, it's app.js. And we'll pass it its on click. And <coughs> let's say, let's create a new function that's called next quote click handler, for instance. And to be honest, as I always like to do, I like to console log out any statement just to make sure that um, we are creating a click handler correctly, that the button is uh, reading in the click handler uh, correctly. So here I created next quote click handler and um, I do believe, did I call it on click? No, I called it click handler. We need to make sure that these are matching. It's click handler and uh, click handler should equal this because next quote click handler belongs to this, this app, this dot next quote click handler. And when that's pressed, it should call out console log hi. And again, I want you to uh, keep in mind that it's the parent component that makes the click handler and passes it down to the child component. Let's go to our application, uh, inspect, and let me drag this in here. Um, actually, press next quote a few times, 
and you'll see that hi is uh, logged onto the console. So the button that the button component that we created is working. It's taking in a function and calling it when it's clicked. Awesome, great job. We now have a application with a button in it that renders out uh, to the console. It may seem like a small feat, but this is what I mean by taking the application small step by small step. Sooner or later, these small steps will all um, add up, and you'll you'll see that uh, we create created a full fleshed out app. Um, in the next video, I will be creating some faux data, some fake data, uh, fake quotes um, with some fake authors, learning it how to import it to our React um, application, and um, how we can uh, add the functionality to the button to display a different quote every time. Uh, but for now, I do want to leave you with some reading material, a classic React article written by uh, Dan Abramov, who is the creator of Redux and Create React App. He knows his React. Um, it's on Medium. I will link it in the description below. But it does describe the difference between presentational and container components. It's something that every React developer does need to know. With that, um, Thanks for watching the video. Please click subscribe. Please click like. Please leave me comments um, below. Please follow me on Twitter at the Web Dev Coach. Um, this is the Web Dev Coach signing off. Thanks for your time.